here we go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Samurai. I'm Geneva. I'm Sarah. So we've done a few bits of uh, Dave Chappelle in his stand-up special, Age of Spin, and we've gotten requests on why not watch the entire uh, stand-up special. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I say, let's do it, yeah? Let's do it! Yeah. So we will be watching it all the way through. So this is the only intro that you will see until the very end. So we're gonna break it up into different parts, how we did with the uh, uh, Hassan Minhaj uh, special. So that was our first trial with that and people seem to like it. But during the whole thing, we're just gonna let it play. And depending on how long YouTube allows us to play, we will have to break it up into you know different times, different slots and Cutting stuff. Cutting and slicing. Yeah. But however, if you do wanna watch our entire reaction, as long as you already have your own copy, you can always sync our reaction along with it as if you're watching it with us. So come hang out with us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have Hassan Minaj uh, in the Patreon special as well. Does that make any sense? Correct. Yeah. Patreon. Patreon. So with this, we've seen the bit where his son met Kevin Hart for the first time. <laughs> so we will have to rename that one and put it to where it fits into the special. Yeah. So are we ready? Yes. Oh, I'm ready. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We ready? <laughs> so if you do like our reaction, please like, comment, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell. Again, this is the stand up special from Dave Chappelle, The Age of Spin. And here we go. Have a seat, feel comfortable, relax. Relax. <laughs> I want to thank everyone in LA for a wonderful week. It's been great here. Uh, you know what? Uh, it's been 10 years since the last time I played Los Angeles, if you can imagine. I know. I know, I've been gone for a very long time. <laughs> and unbeknownst to you, it was a difficult 10 years. I'm not gonna take you through all the agony I've been through, but it was tough. Oh, it was gone for 10 years, yeah. Some of it you might have seen. I don't know if you ever saw on TMZ uh, the big headline, Dave Chappelle drunk on stage in Detroit. Well, if you saw it, I wasn't drunk. Uh, I had smoked some reefer <laughs> with some rappers. Yeah. I don't know if you know anything about hanging out with rappers, but their weed is very strong. <laughs> Stronger than what I was accustomed to. The article goes on to say I was booed off stage, which is also incorrect. I was booed. I did not leave. <laughs> It was a long bump. It was a fucking nightmare. Two puffs of weed, that's all it was. Two puffs. <laughs> I never had that happen where I take two puffs of weed. I looked at the guy next to me, I was like, I'm gonna bomb, nigga, I can feel it. <laughs> and that guy called my name, Drew. <laughs> Niggas was like, Ooh. <laughs> You know, normally when you do a comedy show, you guys don't know what it looks like up here, but niggas be just looking up at you like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's how the show started. It didn't take long for the faces to switch up. Like, what the fuck? So I started looking amongst themselves. So I knew I wasn't doing good. I don't remember what I was saying. It just took one person to break the ice. It's a black lady with a Ford Motor shirt on. Oh my God. <laughs> Stood up suddenly. Fuck you, Dave Chappelle. I said, excuse me. <laughs> she said, I worked all week for this shit, and this show sucks. And in a weird act of racial harmony, a conservative white guy stood up and backed her up. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> the whole crowd banged together and started chanting, We want our money back. We want our money back. I said, Oh shit. I snapped out of it. Good people of Detroit, <laughs> hear me. Hear me now. <laughs> you will never get your fucking money back. <laughs> Fuck that. I said, I'm like evil Knievel. I get paid for the attempt. Oh my God. I didn't promise this shit would be good. <laughs> Boo, they said, Fuck you. 
This went on for a long time. And then after the show, I felt so bad, I took half of the money from the show, thousands of dollars. I said, I'm gonna give this to charity. And you know what I did? I bought $25,000 worth of bubble gum and drove around Detroit and handed it out to the homeless so they could chew it and still be hungry. <laughs> Detroit that night. Because not only did I bomb, nigga, I had to go back to the very same room the next night and do it all over again. Fucking nightmare. That would be like if you were having sex with a woman and for some reason, this would never happen, but for some reason, she had a mouse trap in her pussy. <laughs> you get caught in a trap. And then you gotta fuck her again tomorrow night. I'd still do it, but you know, I'd be careful the next time. <laughs> The old mouse trap in the pussy trick. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a tough time. And I wanted to give up sometimes. I almost did give up, but then I, right, right before I gave up, I decided not to. But I made the call. I made the call. They answered the phone. Hello? Dancing with the stars. Uh, <laughs> No. No. Yeah. Oh, uh, if you see me on that shit, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> My spirit is broken. If you see me waiting for them judges. <laughs> <laughs> getting critiqued on my cha-cha, no. fuck <laughs> that. I've been hanging out in there. I haven't been working in LA, but I, I come out here and, and hang out and shit. I, uh, I was out here a few weeks ago. I almost got arrested. I'm not bullshitting. This happens to a lot of black people. Well, what, what happened was, <laughs> I was coming out of one of those nightclubs in Hollywood, and, and my friend saw me. I guess I was wobbling or something. So he just rolled up. It's a good friend of mine. He's like, hey, Dave, give me the keys. And I was like, all right, nigga, just take the keys. And I got in the passenger side of my car, and he drove it. And it was fine. Just talking, chopping it up. And then on the 10, the blue and whites hit us. Yeah. Now I should tell you, the friend that was driving me was black, which really doesn't have anything to do with the story, <laughs> other than to let you know, there was fear in the car. <laughs> Not my fear. I'm black, but I'm also Dave Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured, you know, shit'll probably be fine. Traffic stop started off on the right foot. Cops came up to the driver's side. Hi, how you guys doing? And he recognized me immediately. Oh, Dave Chappelle. And I looked at my friend like, we getting out of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, you know, you guys were swerving in the lane. Do you mind uh, just stepping out the car for a second? Still no cause for alarm. I looked at the rear view mirror. The body language of the arrest looked good. He was talking. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started fucking with the radio. You know a traffic stops going good if you listen to the radio when someone else is outside of the car. Mm -hmm. But then when I looked back in the rearview mirror, something had gone horribly wrong. <gasps> the motherfucker's back there like... Oh. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, they were stuffing him in the back of the car, and I thought, you know, when anybody would think of a situation like that, oh my God, what is gonna happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> And the police walked up to the window. Uh, Mr. Chappelle, we had to arrest your friend. He refused to take our breathalyzer test. I said, that mother <laughs> <laughs> Not complying, that's odd. <laughs> so officer, what's gonna happen to me? Well, you're fine. We're just gonna have to ask you to step out of the car so we can impound the vehicle and we'll arrange for you to have a ride home. I said, oh, well, nah, I would rather you just give me the keys. <laughs> He said, well, Mr. Chappelle, I mean, your friend already told us he's your designated driver. We can't let you drive in this condition. I was like, no, nigga, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and then suddenly, suddenly the shit turned into Vegas. He was like, I'll let you blow for it. I said, excuse me? <laughs> he said, if you blowing my breathalyzer, I said, oh, nigga, I thought you was trying to get your <laughs> 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 If you blow in my breathalyzer and pass, 
I'll give you the keys to the car. I said, eh. <laughs> Set him up, nigga, let's play. Yeah. <laughs> and I blew in that thing. <laughs> and it made a noise. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> and he looked at it and he said, oh, well, Mr. Chappelle, I guess you're, you're free to go. <laughs> I said, I am. <laughs> I didn't know that thing didn't pick up weed. I drove home on a 10, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, no, it all worked. <laughs> Staying in the lane. I'm one of the lucky ones. It doesn't work out that well for everybody. I saw that videotape of that lady that got beat up in LA in the traffic. You see that shit on Rush Hour traffic? They beat a black woman's ass. This woman didn't even do anything wrong. It's fucked up. It was so fucked up, it didn't even go to court. The city of LA just gave that woman $1.5 million for her pain and suffering. That is not bad, considering that's the same amount of money that Marcos Maidana made to fight Floyd Mayweather the second time. Boxing, boxing. And this woman obviously hasn't trained a day in her life. You can see it on the tape. She didn't come to fight. Her guards were low. She was taking a lot of shots. No bobbing and weaving. Everybody's mad at police now. I watch that. You see that shit on Netflix? The uh, the making of making a murderer. Mm. Yeah, have you seen Stephen that? Avery story. Yeah, well, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Stephen Avery is in more trouble than any white person in the history of the United States has ever been in. In a justice system designed for him to thrive. Mm. He's failed miserably twice. Twice. <laughs> I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. If making a murder was about a black dude, that shit would be called, duh. <laughs> <laughs> of course everything can go wrong. Seems like he did it all right. Yeah, the motherfucker even had $200,000 for his legal defense. That should get you off in Wisconsin. That's like OJ money. Oh. <laughs> all he needed to get off that he didn't have was a single black juror. That's all it would have took. Because only a black dude in the United States can look at 11 other dudes and be like, I think the police did this shit. <laughs> he's, fuck, he's fucked up in the game. <laughs> 